Whether you are a die-hard Halloween fan or you are just looking for simple and easy Halloween hacks, I have you covered with these Dollar Tree DIYs, so let's get to it. I love grabbing these signs from Dollar Tree. I went ahead and I snatched four of them up and I have some of the larger popsicle sticks. I'm using some hot glue and I'm attaching all four of these together horizontally. So I just line them up and then I'm actually attaching them on the front side because I will be using the back side to create a larger sign. Once I had them all together, I went ahead and I removed the stickers. I filled in the holes. When the hole filler dried, I sanded that nice and smooth and I painted it black. This little wooden skeleton might be my favorite thing that Dollar Tree is carrying this year, so I had to grab three of them. I'm doing the whole hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. There's a little metal ring that holds the different body segments together, so it's really easy to twist and turn them until you have them positioned exactly the way you want them. So once I have them all positioned, I just use some hot glue to secure them, also making sure that I secured the hands in place as well. And just for a few dollars, you have a very fun and cute Halloween sign. Isn't it adorable? If you happen to only have one of these little skeletons, all you need is one board, either one of the Beware ones, or if you happen to also have one of these black pumpkin ones, that will work as well. I'm using the black pumpkin one. What I really like is once I place down the skeleton head right on top of that pumpkin, his eyes will stay hollow. I'm using hot glue to secure him down and positioning him as I go and giving him kind of like a dancing vibe. So I wanted it like one hand up, one hand down, his hip sticking out. I just thought that would be really fun and cute. Once I had him secured down, that was it. Super fun, super easy, and super fast. So I snatched up one of these white Dollar Tree candles and some of their wooden Halloween stickers. I grabbed the three black skulls right out of there and I wanted to place them vertically on the candle. To really secure them down though, I'm using some hot glue. That way I know that they will stay on well past the season. I absolutely love it and it only took me a few seconds. So here I have three of the Dollar Tree skulls and yes, these are a little bit spooky, but I do have a 15 year old, so gotta please him a little bit too. And a plunger. I'm only going to be using the wooden handle that comes with this with a utility knife. Now to stack these, all I'm doing is cutting an X and then pushing that plunger handle straight through. Now for the one that goes in the center, I have to place an X or cut an X on the bottom and on the top. And then you can just push that right onto that plunger stick. And then I went ahead and I did the same thing with the very top one. Now there's a little bit of room still, so you could actually add a fourth school or you can just leave a little extra room on the top and the bottom. I only had room for three because I'm placing this inside the lantern as you see, and I love it. I think it looks so good. I just recently made these lanterns. I'll make sure to link that video for you if you want to check that out. But isn't it darling a little bit spooky, but perfect. If you live in a warm place like I do and you cannot light a fire in the fall, you can place a couple of the skulls in your fireplace like I did. I think this looks so good. These little ghosts make the perfect garland and they're not spooky, so great for those of you that like something a little bit more fun for Halloween. So along with that and some wooden stickers, I'm just gonna be grabbing the boo, removing the mouth and eyes. They just pop out super easily. To make sure that the boo stayed on the ghost really well, I did use some hot glue, and now I know that it's not going anywhere. Now with the other ghost, you can remove like the eyes, the mouth, and then there's some other little parts you can remove, and you can decide which ones you wanna remove parts on and which ones you don't. I kinda just did a random pattern. Now to hang this, I am using some of the Dollar Tree beads. I just grabbed a few of those, and I'm hot gluing those to the back, and then using some twine, threading that through, and it's ready for me to hang. I think it looks so cute. I really like it combined with little pumpkin bead garland that I made a while back. I think that those two together look super cute. 
keeping with the ghost trend, go ahead and grab one of these white candles from Dollar Tree. And they do have some glass markers. And as you can see, it goes on kind of light. Honestly, I like the Sharpie better. Let me show you how much darker it makes it. And most of us already have Sharpies at hand, at home, and it takes less than 30 seconds to make this really cute ghost candle. All you're doing is drawing three ovals and coloring them in easy breezy, and isn't it darling? Of course, Dollar Tree has candles other than white. So go ahead and grab an orange, yellow, and white. And I'm sure you know exactly where I'm going with this because it looks like candy corn. I like to group candles in groups of three. So first you just wanna go ahead and cut off any outside wrapper that they may have on them. And then for the next step, you can use some stickers. You can handwrite it again if you want to. I'm actually going in with a vinyl decal and spelling out the word candy. That simple and easy, and I think it's really cute. I grabbed this bowl at Dollar Tree as well as this candlestick and immediately knew that I needed a cute little candy dish to hold that candy corn that I love to eat at Halloween. So with a little bit of Gorilla Glue on the bottom of the bowl, I attached it to the top of the candlestick. Once that's set up, I wanted to help the bowl blend a little bit better into the candlestick itself. So I'm covering the bowl with some contact paper. You could also use like some saran wrap. And then I went in with some painter's tape just to secure that edge and make it a little bit more crisp. After that, I took it out to my spray tent. I gave it a good coat of black spray paint on the bottom of that bowl, also spraying the candlestick. That way the matte black matches and then I removed everything if there was a tiny bit of cleanup and I just took a q-tip to clean up because the paint was still wet but look how cute my little candy dishes let me tell you keeping the candy corn in to get a picture of this for you was a little bit difficult my whole family kept reaching their hand in so the bowl is only half full time to go to the store One of my favorite things to do is to take pumpkins that I've picked up in the past that I'm no longer using and give them some fresh life. These Dollar Tree pumpkins are perfect for that. So I hauled them out to my spray tent with some black spray paint, gave them a nice solid coat, and now they are perfect for my Halloween displays as kind of like filler pumpkins. What's great about this is I already had all the supplies on hand and I didn't have to spend any extra money. I love the fall pumpkins with the yarn. I actually did one in this video and I just thought it was the cutest thing. So I wanted to make one for Halloween too. I took my utility knife and I'm cutting a hole on the top and the bottom. Thanks to you guys for the tip on cutting a hole on the bottom as well. I then painted my pumpkin black. That way, if any of the parts poked through the yarn, you wouldn't even be able to tell. After that, I took my yarn and I divided it up into nine strands, tied it to a knot, and started to braid it with three strands in each section of my braid. I made several braids before I started putting this together because I wanted to do like an assembly line order, and then I just started wrapping it around the pumpkin. I started at the top, go around to the bottom, go up through the holes, and I just kept going. Once I started getting it filled in pretty well, I would hot glue at the top and then hot glue at the bottom and not worried about going up in the center, and that actually saved me some yarn as well. It was all covered. I grabbed these blackberry picks and a wood little piece that comes in a little bag from Dollar Tree. I painted the wood piece black, then I popped those berry picks right into the top hole of the pumpkin and hot glued the wood piece right on top to act as the stem. I think this turned out so cute and it's perfect for Halloween. An easier version of the exact same idea is to grab an orange foam pumpkin, cut out that top and bottom, paint that pumpkin black, but this time I'm using a thicker yarn. Again, I picked this up at Dollar Tree, but this reminds me of like witch's hair. It's really wide, but stringy, but because it's thick, I don't have to braid it and it covers the pumpkin so fast. All I do is I take it around the pumpkin, looping it all the way through. It took me a couple of minutes to cover the entire pumpkin. Again, I go in with the same berry picks. I painted a wood piece black and hot glue that right on top. And then this pumpkin is done. 
Honestly, between the two, this one is my favorite and it took me less time. It's adorable. Dollar Tree brings out these pumpkins every year in like two to three different colors. Go ahead, grab whatever color you want. Snatch that up, remove the raffia bow, take some sandpaper to smooth it out and get rid of that glitter and then paint it black. After that, you're gonna go ahead and grab some wooden stickers. I chose the jack-o'-lantern pattern and I went with the orange one and I'm hot gluing that on. And then I have this orange and black raffia that I grabbed at Dollar Tree. I grabbed a few strands of that, tied a bow at the top. And then this cute little jack-o'-lantern pumpkin is all done and it was super fast and easy. Well, one more quick and easy candle project for you. This time I'm grabbing three of those black candles and using that same black and orange raffia. Go ahead and grab a few strands of that, wrap it around the three black candles, then take a few more strands, tie off a bow, and then hot glue it onto those previous strands. And that is it. It just adds a nice little pop of black and orange to put in the mix of your decor. I love it and it was easy and it took me a few seconds. I have done a couple fall wreaths with this pumpkin wreath form but not a Halloween one and I wanted to try my hand at it. So on the bottom I'm using some black mesh and some Chanel stems to hold it all together. So to start off with I cut the, the Chanel stems, I bend them and then I cut them right in half and for the black mesh I'm taking it around a six inch piece of cardboard wrapping it all the way around. When I get to the end of the roll I hold it tight on one end and I take my scissors and I cut that one side and then I grab the side that I cut, I hold it tight, flip it and cut the other side and that is how I get my strips of mesh. Once I have all my mesh cut, I then individually roll them and tuck them in my fingers to hold them. I do three rolls and then half of a Chanel stem, I put that around it, twist it only a couple of times and that is how I hold my little bundles together. I like to work in an assembly line, so I like to have a lot of little bundles before I start applying them onto the wreath form. Once I'm ready, then I start applying them going up the bottom, starting from the bottom, working my way up. And I put about five to seven. It just depends on how full you really want your wreath to be. And I apply them all over the bottom of the pumpkin wreath form. After I covered the bottom, I'm using this yarn to cover up the top by just wrapping it around. I chose this yarn because it was thicker and dark. You can really use any yarn that you want to because you won't really see it when it's finished. I did make sure that I wasn't wrapping it too tight. I went all the way around the top, the stem, and finished going around the second half of the top. I covered up the rest of the top of the pumpkin using hot glue as needed as I was going around. So at the top of it, I would then twist the yarn around and then I would use the hot glue again at the bottom of it, making sure that I covered any part of the metal that would be showing. Now to decorate it, I have these berry picks. I have them in purple and black and I'm just shoving them in different places and it adds some texture. Now you also see I have some black skull heads on here. These are some picks. I'm gonna be moving those in just a second, so I'm not even talking about them yet. The next thing I did is I had these large flowers. I added that to just one side of it. And then for balance, I added these purple pumpkin picks to the other side of it. Then I placed the skull heads randomly in there, peeking out at the bottom. I thought that looked a lot better. They kind of hide, but when you get up close, you can see them. And I thought that that gave a really fun, spooky vibe. The last thing I did was add the word spooky on and all I'm using are the little berry picks to hold it in place. It was so easy. I absolutely love this. It is spooky. Perfect for Halloween. Dollar Tree always has placemats and I grabbed two of them and I have these black felt cats. So to start off with, I am taking my hot glue gun and I'm taking it all the way around the edge of the two placemats, making sure they are both facing outwards. And I just went around three edges, leaving one side open. Then I hot glue two of the cats facing each other to the very front. After that, I took a little bit of polyfill, stuffed that as much as I wanted to make sure it was nice and fluffy, and then finished it off adding some hot glue 
to the last little side that I hadn't closed off. And now I have a cute little Halloween pillow. Isn't it darling? And it was only a couple of dollars. Here's some more Halloween fun for you to check out. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.